No, we're on we're on this gospel train together. Yes. Glory. You know, you guys should be on the gospel train with us. What does that mean? The kingdom of God train. We ought to be together in the things of God. You know, working with the same heart, the same mind for a great cause as illustrated in the Bible. The Bible says striving together for the faith of the gospel. And so around here, we don't expect people just to gather on Sunday morning. You realize we're not, I don't expect us to gather. I expect us to assemble. Anybody ever assembled anything? Anybody ever taken something out of the box and just dumped all the stuff out and said, there, it's all gathered together. No. You dump that thing out and it's like, whoo, now we've got to assemble it. Now we've got to put this thing together. We've got to figure this thing out. We've got to find every part and put every part in its place. Well, in the body of Christ, you're part. You're part. Everybody is a part in the body of Christ. And you've got to find your place or it's just a clump of gathered junk. So just attending, just gathering occasionally... Uh, is not what Jesus expects of the body of Christ. That's right. That's right. It's not what he expects. Right. He expects us to get assembled together. Yeah. Find your place. That's what we're doing tonight. This church life is, is for you to commit to the body of Christ. Understand your position. Understand the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So are you assembled? That's the question. That's not the message. I'm just, this is just preamble. Are you assembled? If you're not assembled, your part ain't going to function right. You can't just take the bolt and throw it out there and think it's going to do its job. You can't just take the one mechanism and throw it out there if it's not connected to the other mechanisms. So don't just think that you can be a Christian out there without the rest of the body of Christ. That's why church is important. Amen. Amen. So we're not just gathering to hear, hear the inspirational speaker. We're not just gathered together because I just love the way the pastor does that. Every, every Sunday it encourages me. No. <laughs> we're here to find our place take our role yes, step Lord into Lord. our armor yes. and get some things accomplished yes. while we're on the earth yes. and you know you know for the natural person it's like Phew. and that's fine if you don't have ears to hear it, that's fine but for the spiritual person we recognize these things are eternal hallelujah I said eternal yes. when we get to heaven it will all be clear when we get to heaven, I will have been correct. <laughs> when we get to heaven, I and the Word of God will be found true. No matter what anybody thought. Does that make sense? So I understand Scripture is very real, more real than what you see. The words of God is the one thing that's eternal. The chair disappears. Your job disappears. Everything of the natural earth disappears. Yes, it does. Word of God. Yes, it Goes does. back to dust. Yeah. Except for the Word of God. Yeah. So if I just hook up to the Word of God, make it my, my first speaker of life, make it my first priority, give it preeminence over everything in my life, I'll never fail. Yeah. That's right. It, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like because in heaven it will all be clear. The things we do, this, what we do today is eternal. What we do today will be registered in eternity. Thank you, thank you, Lord. The way that we love one another is registered in heaven. Amen. The way that we have right motives toward one another always with everyone yeah. is registered yeah. in heaven. Glory. Now the sinner doesn't understand that. The sinner tries to figure out ways to scheme and get its way and manipulate just enough to where no one knows but I benefit. The Christian never does that. Amen. Never yeah. does that. Amen. Even when the wallet is empty. Even when times are tough. Even when it's about to be embarrassed. It never, the true Christian never compromises its yeah. conscience. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. Hallelujah. That's good. When you start living like that, you'll be a happy person. Amen. When you start living without any element of, of manipulation or dishonesty, lack of integrity. When you eliminate those things, you will feel Thank some true God. joy on the inside. Thank you, Lord. When you can do your taxes uprightly, yes. without the fear of not paying. 
That's why people don't pay. They're afraid to pay. That's why people don't prepare ahead of time. They're afraid to. That's true. Okay. Whew. Praise the Lord. That's not part of the message. Aren't you glad? Well, let me read you our annual Fellowship of the Unashamed. <clears throat> now, we do it more than annually, but I like to do it. So let's just read here. This is just a quote from a, a, a preacher. I don't even know who he is. But um, this is what he said. This, is what, this ought to be all of our call. It ought to be all of our horn blowing. This is what we ought to think like. I, I, I read this my first year with the Lord and I thought, man, this is exactly what I got saved for. This is exactly what I got baptized in that water for. Hallelujah. This is exactly why I chose to follow Jesus. This is what I want. Without this that I'm about to read, it's all just minimized. It's all just watered down. I did not want to get saved and walk with God so I could have a watered down, weak religion. Amen. That never interested me in the first place. But when I found out things could be different, I jumped in. And I'm not putting it all on me. I mean, he drew me. I understand that. But at the same time, I recognized that I, I jumped in. Some people, they want to go into the water like this. Just touching the toe. No, you can't jump into God's kingdom like that. That's not the best way. I mean, you could, I guess, but that's not the best way. Anybody ever been to New Braunfels down there? Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, we, we, our, some of our neighbors had gone. So they convinced my parents to go. So my parents and I and my cousin went down there and we were planned for a big trip, you know. And we go down there and I'm just a, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old kid. I don't know what I was. But we drove down there and uh, we parked at the river and here we are, we're getting our stuff out and there's water and here's kid and that means kids in water, right? And my dad said now, he said now hold on a second. Now don't, don't just go up there and walk into the water. And I didn't know it was supposed to be cold. So they didn't talk, tell me that. He said don't just go up there and just kind of walk in. He said just go dive in there. <laughs> and that's the only way to get in New Braunfels water is jump in. Because if you don't, you'll be too chicken. <laughs> and so I did, just like any other kid. I jumped in there and had the shock of my life. <laughs> what has happened? And then all of a sudden, after about 30 seconds, you're numb. After about 30 seconds, <laughs> after 30 seconds, let's party. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's what you need to do with the kingdom of God. You need to jump in. And, and let the shock occur, which is, what in the world have I done? I have just left all natural living for something I can't even see. You should have gone through that by now. And if you haven't, you can do it today. Why not today? The doors are already locked and it's all settled anyway. We already prayed and asked God, it's going to come to pass. You're jumping in. Let the shock occur and then all of a sudden, this is kind of cool. Let's float down the river. Yes. Let's go down the rapids. Glory, glory. Then let's get out and do it again. The river. Like the river. Hallelujah. Here's what we ought to have signed up for. <clears throat> I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is secure. I am finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, mundane talking, chintzy giving, and dwarfed goals. Hallelujah. Pause. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. Amen. I now live by presence, learn by faith, Love by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. 
My pace is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, back up, let up, or shut up until I've preached up, prayed up, paid up, stored up, and stayed up for the cause of Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until he returns, give until I drop, preach until all I know, and work until he comes. And when he comes to get his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. My colors will be clear, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Hallelujah. Let's go out and change the world, why don't we? Let's go out there and make a difference in somebody's life. Even just a simple tender thing, that's all you got to do. And you have eternal reward, eternal reality happens every time we do it. Eternal diamonds, I don't know what they look like, but they're probably better than the ones on the earth. That's true. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. One preacher said in our, he said this, in our modern world, our real danger comes not from irreligion or non-religion, but from mild religion. I've always said that. Joan and I have recognized that over and time and time again. I'd rather take someone that doesn't know anything, that just stepped off the dark sinner's road to destruction. I'd rather take them to train them up than to take some old mild religion person and convince them there's something better. You know, building a house from scratch is always easier than tearing down the old and building up the new. It's important where new Christians grow in the Lord. It's important what kind of foundation Christians get in the beginning. Your foundation matters deeply. If it's crooked, everything's crooked. If your foundation cracks, if your foundation has cracks and, and uh, uh, you know, mess ups or dilutions in it, then your windows aren't going to fit. Your doors aren't going to shut. All sorts of stuff goes crazy. And that's where Christians find themselves. They got wrong foundations. You need to recognize if you got a shaky foundation in your early upbringing of Christianity, you need to recognize it and say, you know what? Things just don't fit around here. I just don't get it. Things aren't working like, like they ought to. Be willing to wipe that out. Let's just start over. Let's get the jackhammer. Let's dig up the whole thing up, tear the whole thing down, build the whole thing back up straight. Amen. I mean, you might want to keep just one pole of Jesus Christ and let's start from there. <laughs> let's keep the center pole. We used to put up tents in the tent crusades. And the most important thing of the whole tent crusade was that center pole. If you get that center pole off, nothing fits, nothing works, the tent might fall. So keep your center pole up for Jesus Christ. That's, and then we'll start from there and we'll build all the right doctrines of Jesus Christ. Amen. Without watering things down, throwing things out and, and neglecting things because they're a little difficult on the flesh. You know what I mean. <clears throat> okay, let's go read the Bible. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. No, let's read verse 3. 3. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a lively hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Glory. Uh, just let the Bible make you happy. You know, if you're ever sad, just read the Bible. Just read the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll be happy by the time I get to verse 8. We can go home. All right. We're not going home, but we could go home. <clears throat> Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, greatly rejoice, greatly rejoice, greatly rejoice. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hopefully I want to pull us today back to the fact that spiritual truths are rejoiceable. Amen. Uh -huh. 
We can rejoice about spiritual things. It, you know, spiritual religious things aren't just for the preacher that went to Bible school. Amen. Spiritual things are supposed to be for every single believer in Jesus to rejoice in. Amen. So that you can keep your head above the water of this life and succeed at it. Amen. Spiritual people always have great success in the earth. Did you hear me? Amen. Spiritual people always have great success in the earth. Right. Always. Amen. Always. Amen. Always. Amen. Verse 6, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. I'm not saying you won't have trials. You'll have some trials, no problem. You might even be grieved by some trials. Sure. Keep your head above the water, though. That the genuineness of your faith, King James says, the trying of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire. Now that's not the holy fire of the Spirit, that's the outside trials fire. Yeah. May be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Really the, the, the way we understand the fire of God and the chastisement of God is the Holy Spirit within you. Yeah is burning on the inside of your heart. And that's the thing that's really going to turn you from, from dirty to clean. Hallelujah. Verse 8, Whom having not seen you love. That's really what I want to get to in this whole passage. Whom having not seen you love, though now you don't see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible. And full of glory. King James says, joy unspeakable. It means you can't even speak about it. Hallelujah. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. But I wanted you to see verse 8. Whom having not seen, you still rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll just make this statement. Until we, Christian, can rejoice in the one we can't see more than what we do see. We hadn't reached it yet. We hadn't got to that holy life yet of joy and glory of the kingdom of God until we can be so ecstatic of the one that's beyond the veil. Thank you, Jesus. Until we can sit in our house in the presence of Jesus and be so in awe, so happy, so content. Oh, do I have to go to work? Do I have to do that? Oh, this is so one. Until you can do that, you hadn't reached it yet. Until you can rejoice in the invisible more than the visible, you hadn't experienced true Christianity. Amen. Jesus is a real person. Amen. He's a real person. He is not on paper. He is not just a, just a religious term. He's not just a picture on the wall of a little sad fella. <laughs> Did you know Jesus isn't sad? Did you know that he rejoices with joy unspeakable and full of glory? Hallelujah. Did you know that Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Did you know that he's full of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? Yes. Did you know that Jesus is not sad? Hallelujah. If you have sad pictures of Jesus around the house, I suggest, you don't have to. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. <laughs> Put them in the attic where all the other dusty things should be. Let the moth and, and rust get that thing. Because it'll, what it'll do is it'll taint you just a tad, just a tad. Having a wrong image, remember, having a wrong image is worse than no image. That's true, that's true. Having the image of a sad, dead Jesus is not healthy. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. Don't get mad at me. I had one person that got mad at me. He said, does that mean I got to take the cross? I, did, I didn't talk about your cross. I'm talking about the image that you have in your mind is, is determined by what you see and what you that's hear. True, that's, true. Yeah, that's true. In my office, I have a smiling picture of Jesus. You ever seen a smiling picture of Jesus? I got him. And that really doesn't even depict him. That's not what he looks like now. But anyway, okay. Praise the Lord. Okay, turn to Revelation chapter 1 with me. You know, we need to tie ourselves up to real Christianity. We need to link Amen. up to the heart of God. That's right. I mean, if we're going to be Christian, we ought to really be Christians. If we're going to be believers, we ought to really look like it. 
We ought to think like it, act like it, talk like it, rejoice like it, hang out together like it, love like it. Yes. Beat the devil up like it. I mean, we ought to do the things that Jesus would do if he was here. I mean, we ought to be sincere. We ought to be happy. We ought to be fun. We ought to be glorious. We ought to be exciting. We ought to be full of love, joy, tenderness, patience, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance. I mean, we're, real Christianity, we, we, I, I like real Christianity. That's why I'm saved. Yes. Amen. I'm saved because the Spirit of God gets to live in me and turn me into a God person. Amen. Gets to live in me and teach me how to speak like God would speak. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1, I wanted to read you this here. Verse 18, Jesus said, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. I want you to know Jesus is alive. And I want you to know Jesus is coming again. Amen. Go to Revelation 19 with me. You know, these things remind us. Keep us tied closely to what we believe. You know, your belief ought to be sincere on the inside of you. Amen. We ought to be solid in believing. One preacher said that unless people are willing to die for their faith, they cannot be fully trusted. Unless people are willing to die for their faith, they can't be fully trusted. I don't know about you, and I, you know, I get some flack from some of these things, but when I got saved and came in that first year, I recognized, you know what, I'd do anything. I'd do anything for the Lord. I don't care what it takes. i die for Him. i live for Him. I don't care. I'll do whatever it takes. And I thought about it over and over again. What if I did get captured overseas and, and arrested and thrown in prison? What if I did get shot, you know, by the religious government of some nation? Could I handle it? I thought, sure, I could handle it. No problem. I'd get me an extra crown in heaven, by the way, if I did that. Now, most of us, some of you are already shaking in the chair. You're thinking, oh, my gosh, where's he going with this? <laughs> most of you are never going to die for your faith, but you ought to at least think about it. Yeah, that's Could true. you? That's and then somebody says, oh, yes, I could die for, for Jesus. Well, could you live for him? So we can go all around the, the, the globe thinking these things. We can go all around the, the arena that we're speaking on. And it's all designed so that we can take analysis of ourselves. Am I, how, am I, how am I doing here? Am I sold out for Jesus? Am I sincere about the Lord? You know, he's coming back. I want you to know Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth. He's coming back. The first thing that's going to happen is a horn's going to toot. It's going to do more than toot. It's going to blow. It's going to shake the foundations of this earth. And the dead in Christ are going to come out of those graves. It's going to happen. Jesus Christ has not forgotten his promise. He is coming back. Now the disappointed, sad Christians are thinking, yeah, when's he coming? The excited Christians are thinking, he might come tomorrow. The dead in Christ are going to come out of those graves first. Then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them in the air. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. So when the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God sound, I'm not worried about anything. You know, some people are like, well, let's make sure we're all together, family. Let's come. Not me. You're on your own, man. When that trumpet blows, everybody's on their own. I'm up. Hope you're with me. I'm not delaying around to see if I can go through the seven years of tribulation on the earth. The trumpet sounds. I'm out of here. Now, personally, I think it's going to happen Sunday morning or Wednesday night. I'm just not so sure. Not this Sunday morning or Wednesday night. I think it'd be fun if we we're all together, but I'm not going to count on it. Not going to look for it. Just I know when I hear the horn. Hopefully it won't be faintly in the distance. It'll be, it'll shake everything. And then all the, all the believers disappear for seven years. This is real stuff. This is reality. I mean, it doesn't seem reality yet, but it's going to happen. Then it's going to seem like reality. So you might as well think like it's reality now. That's how you get all your prayers answered anyway. You're supposed to act like it's so even before it's so. And that's how faith works. You start rejoicing now for the thing that's coming as if it's come and therefore you're in faith long enough for it to actually happen. Yes. That's 
But for the coming of the Lord, it's going to happen. Might as well rejoice about it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> then we're in heaven for seven years. And we're going to do several things. I don't know what, but we're going to do several things. I know we're going to eat supper. Actually, we're going to do, I think we're going to do some rejoicing. We're probably going to do some training. We are training. We're going to be doing some serious training for earth life. Because we're coming back to rule for a thousand years. So in heaven for seven years, we're going to be uh, learning from Paul, and learning from Peter, and learning from Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's going to train us in the ways that really we should be living. Then we're going to eat some supper. And as soon as we're done eating dessert... We're coming back to the earth. Hallelujah. I don't think it's going to feel like seven years up in heaven. I really don't know. I mean, one year's with the Lord, a thousand days, so who knows? A thousand years, one year, whatever. One day, a thousand years, that's what I meant. <clears throat> then we're coming back with Jesus. Well, let's pick it up here. I think that's where we're at now. Uh, not, uh, chapter 19 of Revelation, verse 11. Now, Revelation is not hard and scary. Did you ever think it was hard and scary to read? No, Revelation is a blessing to read. It's excellent. It's all about Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Now here we're coming back. Watch. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. Yep. And in righteousness he judges and makes war with uh, CNN and <laughs> ABC, CBS, NBC. No, with... Uh, he judges and makes war. Basically, he's going to fix everything that's wrong. Lots of wrong things in the earth. The two-party political system is the best we can do on the earth. He's going to fix all that. I'm going to help him. But anyway, verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now, rather than paint a picture and put it on your wall, you ought to think about this picture. Amen. This will change everything. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen. The armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's, that? Who's got white robes? Woo! Glory! You had dirty clothes, dirty robes, but you got saved. And now we got white clothes. We're coming back with him. Followed him on white horses. I got my own white horse. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. I hope this, the, the saddle's padded. No, we won't need saddles. Verse 15. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and, wrath, fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory to God. You know, there's a certain element of what we do in this earth right now where we have authority, we have a desire to overcome, we have a desire to have power, we have a desire to conquer. But because Jesus came as a servant, he sends us as a servant. So in this age called the church age, we are not here to rule and reign the government. That's why all the efforts only go so far. To put righteousness in the United States government or any government only can go so far. And it's challenging. Yes, yes. And many Christians are, are unhappy for decades because they don't see the government changing properly. Well, the thing that's in the Christian is a good thing. To desire that is a good thing. Sure. But to force it to happen now is not the call and commission of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, that's true. After our seven-year supper and our return on white horses, then we fix all that natural stuff. Then we punish all the evil. Then we rule the court system. Then we rule the nations. And we rule it naturally and spiritually. Right now, what we get is spiritual dominion in the thing that pertains to us. The thing that pertains to your life, you have dominion over. Collectively, we can get some things to happen in a community or even a nation as we have faith toward God. 
That's why I always say America's, America's going to be fine financially. We may have some ups and downs, but the Christians in America are going to keep us afloat. Thank you, Jesus. When I first got saved, I thought, oh, America's going to hell in a handbasket. <coughs> Everybody was saying that. I thought, yep, yep, look at all the sins of America. Yep, they're going to fall to the ground. Well, they can't fall to the ground while I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> it can't fall to the ground while all the children of God are here. I'm here. Write that down in your notes. Don't get mad at me. Shut it for later. Ask me later. <clears throat> I guess what all I'm trying to do today is just get us excited about the real things of God. Amen. Just get us excited about this whole spiritual life of Jesus Christ. Expect Him to come. Watch what happens. Think about it. Let it change you today. Let it change your demeanor today. Let it ascend above your financial concerns, your family concerns, your all of your depression potential. Let the truth of Jesus Christ ascend and dominate and help you rule over all of your fleshy, lethargic, Preacher. sorrowful, low living. Amen. Amen. Everybody has to deal with that. How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to deal with it? I just read the Bible. That will help you. Praise the Lord. Some churches aren't reading the Bible. They don't expect people to read the Bible. don't expect people to bring their Bible. I still expect people to bring their Bible. That's true. Some people want us to put the, the Scripture up there. If I do that, then you'll quit bringing your Bibles. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we might eventually do that for a little help. But I want you to get familiar with your Bible because you're not going to have the, the PowerPoint overhead projector at home. Amen. And you're going to need to find, open your Bible and find the place where it was written. That's right. Amen. And if you can't read or don't like to read, then at least you have all the CDs in order so you know what to listen to when you need it. Amen. Yeah. Keep going. Amen. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. So this is when we come back. To the, there's a big battle. We're, all, we're coming back with Jesus. It's going to be a huge battle. It's going to last about a half a day. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be uh, won by this huge sword that the angels carry. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. It'd be nice to shut the devil up. You know, you can shut the devil up yourself. Yes. Amen. You can shut the devil up yourself. Matter of fact, you ought to shut the devil up. He's the one that talks to you in the quiet times. Unless you're in prayer to God. That's why you need to be in prayer to God in the quiet times. Because the devil will talk to you and bother you. Like I told you before, I was walking down the grocery store one time, just minding my own business, looking for peanut butter probably. And uh, the thought came to my mind, some worried thought about the church. I don't remember what it was, but I remember it was a worried money thought. And I just said, shut up, devil, and just kept moving. I thought, what if somebody heard me? I don't know if anybody heard me, but I know the devil heard me because he quit talking. And if the devil's bothering you about something in life, some life concern or some affliction or some anything, because some fear, some doubt, some worry, you're going to have to verbally shut him up. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Eventually, he's going to get cast in the bottomless pit. Thank you, Lord. For now, we're going to have to exercise some dominion. And during that thousand year reign, there is going to be no devil bothering anybody. Amen. There's going to be no sin. There's going to be no temptation. There's going to be no death, no sickness that we can't thwart. Thank you, Lord. He is out. Hallelujah. Look at verse 10. Then he's going to be let loose just for a moment to, to tempt and try all those who were born during the thousand year reign, who were never tempted yet by the devil. Verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone 
where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. So I just wanted you to see that the end is very clear, it's very awesome, and there's going to be no more devil. Until then, uh, we're going to have to be aware of the devil. Until that moment, there's things that happen. Until that moment, we're entrusted with something to do on this earth. You know, ever since the very beginning, ever since the very beginning, the devil has tried to ruin humanity. That's true. That's true. And he succeeded in the beginning. He ruined paradise. He ruined it by tempting the human. Because of one man's sin, tempted by the devil, death reigned by sin. But because of one man's obedience, many were made righteous. The devil tries to ruin humanity. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The, the most prominent work he destroyed was the sin and the death by sin. We don't have to take part in any more death or spiritual death because Jesus thwarted the devil. Then we watched the ministry of Jesus and he started kicking over rocks of Satan. You know, in the Old Testament, there was not much mention of the devil. Just a little bit. Even in the book of Genesis, when the temptation came to Eve, it says the serpent spoke to her, didn't even call him the devil. We know the devil inhabited the serpent. Does that make sense? Yes. So there was very little light or revelation that the devil was the destroyer, the ruiner of humanity. Yeah. Very few people understood that. Well, when Jesus came, the light came. Yes. And he started kicking over the rocks where Satan was hiding. Amen. And then people started recognizing, oh, that's why my family member is so wild and stupid. <laughs> that's why my child keeps getting thrown into the fire and into the water. That's why the man is naked, running around screaming. Yeah. That's why. Yes. Things are so twisted and wrong and dark and evil in the earth. Yes. That's why it's the devil, the deceiver, the tempter, the destroyer. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. The thief came for nothing except to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. The killing, the destroying, the stealing is all from the devil. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why God anointed Jesus. Jesus is the solver of all devil problems. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Who were oppressed? I mean, how were they sick? How were they afflicted? They were oppressed by the devil. Jesus healed all who were oppressed by the devil. I'm telling you what, he is the one that was dead and liveth. Hallelujah. And he's alive forevermore. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. We look at all things in this earth, or the natural man looks at all things in this earth as natural or psychological. Somebody has an issue in their mind, uh, a psychological problem. Mental medication is, well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. We who are spiritual ought to recognize when it's a devil. We need to know when the devil's bothering us. You know, Jesus solves all problems of the devil. All devil issues are solved by the name of Jesus and the authority of the Holy Ghost. The authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ. All devil issues are supposed to be solved. If the devil's bothering you, you do what, who was it? Paul did. Many days, Paul was preaching the gospel over in, in Ephesus, I believe. And uh, the certain fortune teller was following him day and night. Following his, his pack of Christians. Following his believers. This demon-possessed fortune teller was in the mix saying, These are the servants of the Most High God. Hear ye him. Hear ye them. Listen to them. The devil trying to help the gospel. Devils do crazy things. You never know what they're going to do. Whenever you go, I don't know what in the world's wrong with this person. <laughs> it could very well mean... The devil has afflicted, tormented, oppressed, something has afflicted this person. And so the Bible says she did this many days, bothering Paul, just bothering him. I mean, who wants a devil-possessed person in the caravan? Amen. You know, that's true. That's true. 
And the Bible says that Paul being grieved turned and said, not to the woman, to the spirit, come out of her, you unclean spirit. Yes. Cast the spirit of divination out of her. If the devil's bothering you, cast him out. That's right. Come out. If he's bothering you, cast, if he's trying to tempt you, cast him out of there. Tell him to shut up and get out of here. Use your authority. Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. He has a little power, but you have authority over that power. Behold, I give you authority over all the power, all, all the power, all the power of the enemy, all the power of the enemy. When you're sitting on the couch, it feels like the devil has more power than you. But when you start saying some things out of your mouth, you recognize you have more power. Amen. If, you, if you try to beat the devil with a silent lip, you'll never win. He said, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing, 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 nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing, nothing, nothing of the devil gets to hurt Chas. Nothing, nothing. Some weird thing in my body starts trying, no, not here. Not at 6202 Paloma Park Court. Try 6206. <laughs> you know, Luke 10, 19, what I just quoted, that'll cause you to have an attitude. You know, we need an attitude. Amen. We need a holy attitude of love toward God, and we need a holy attitude of hate toward Satan and all of his works. Amen. Until Jesus... <laughs> You know, until the angel, you know, binds him up, throws him in the bottomless pit, we're going to have to deal with some things in this earth. Have you noticed? You're going to have to recognize that for your kids to make it, you're going to have to take some serious authority over the devil as long as they're young. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. One time, Paul, the, the devil, had possessed a certain sorcerer who was trying to stop the salvation of a certain deputy. He was bothering the, the preaching of the gospel. We've seen this in meetings where the devil will show up and try to mess up the message and bother people. Well, we need to take authority over the devil. Amen. And so it happened to Paul. He was preaching the gospel. And this sorcerer was trying to turn the deputy from the faith. And Paul said, you'll be blinded for a season in Jesus' name. Bound him up. Because he was trying to hurt somebody. Trying to harm a certain innocent believer from, from hearing the gospel. Anything harming you, treat it like a devil. Anything harming your people, harming your pathway, treat it like a devil and, and cast it out of there. Got to recognize where the devil's hiding. Kick over all the little places in your life. Kick those things over, cast the devil out of there. Some of you is just bothering you with some bad habit like smoking or something. I know, I know that if you're a Christian and you're smoking, I know that you're not happy about it. I know you're not happy about it. And I, I'm with you. I know how you would feel. Any bad habit like smoking or anything, I know you don't like it. I know you're mad about that. I know every time you do it, you're not happy with yourself. I know that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Keep going. It's all quiet when we talk about people's cigarettes. Keep going. Keep going. I'm with you. I know how you feel. Let's recognize it's the devil bothering you. Little temptation that's nagging at your conscience, causing your faith to be a less secure than it should be. I know you love Jesus. I know you're trying. I know you believe God. But I know that also if you have some nagging sin like that, it's bothering you. Recognize it's the devil. You know, get an attitude against the devil. No, 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 no. No, that's it. That's it. I mean, that's the only way to beat stuff like that. Amen. That's called exercising authority. Yes. Some dirty dogs in the house, you're going to have to exercise authority to get, get it out of there. Yep, that's true. The longer it stays, the more natural it is to have the dirty, mangy mud in there. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. It's true. It's true. But I'm with you. We're all with you. We'll help you. We'll help you get free. We'll use the power of God in the name of Jesus and bam, we'll yes. knock the devil yes. out. Yeah. It works. Every bad habit, every sin, everything that you don't like that's going on, let's deal with it. Let's get on top of it and let's shout until he's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Let's Amen. Like Brother Horton's mom, he said this when he was a kid, he had some fever. And he was sick, and they had a big wedding to go to. And uh, everybody's ready to go to the wedding, but he's sick in bed. He was going to stay home, and the mom and dad were going go to the, go to the wedding. I mean, yeah, go to the wedding. And, uh, 
But his mom came in the, his room to say goodbye, and she looked at him, and he's all sickly looking. You know, just a kid, you know, elementary school kid. And he said this, he said, Mom looked at me, and she came running, and she jumped on top of the bed and on top of me, and she started shouting and screaming at the devil commanding the sickness and the fever to leave me. And she kept screaming and shouting and commanding and screaming and shouting and commanding. And she just stood on top of me for a long time. Hour goes by. She's on top of him commanding the devil out. The devil came out. The sickness left. And his fever broke and he's well. Mom and dad missed the wedding. Because mama got fed up. Mama exercised her authority. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> That's a little different than just, in the name of Jesus, be healed and closing the door and going out. Got things to do. We'll be able to handle it later. Exercising authority means you, you, you recognize this enemy is here to I'm destroy after. you. I'm after it. That's right. Even for 24 hours, 48 hours, five-day fever. If he can knock you out 10% of the year, he's beating the, the tithe off of God. I guess you could say that. Find some way to convince yourself it ain't okay. Find some way to realize, you know what, this is a serious business here of this earth life, and I'm going to win this thing. I mean, no soldier really wants to be at war. But you're at war whether you like it or not. You might as well win it. We all wish we could just sit back and do nothing. Play harps. <laughs> floating on clouds well maybe we get to do that later I doubt it I don't know I think life's more real than that yes. leisure time is good let's keep it in its proper place and recognize you know what when it's time to fight we fight Thank when it's you. time to whip the devil and get him out of here we win Amen. remember we're not a warring church That's right. we don't have to battle and battle and battle till my head falls off no, we're a triumphant church. Amen. We're a triumphant church occupying the land till he comes. We're triumphant. He's already whipped the devil. Amen. He's already whipped the devil. Turn to Hebrews. We'll read that scripture. Turn to Hebrews with me. He's already whipped the devil. All we got to do is kind of enforce what he's already done. It's kind of like the law of the land. We've already got the, the we already took America. <laughs> We fought the revolution, the war is over, and now we're occupying. Right. And in and, and occupying, you have to set up some laws, set up some rules. We got some police. We got some things. We're controlling crime as best we can. And that's what we do as the church as well. We've already won the battle. Amen. We've already taken the land. Now let's occupy and, and help others and protect others. Yes. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Good. Hallelujah. I remember... One time I was uh, hanging out with some single friends and uh, we were at a Baptist church but there was a sect is that a bad word? There was a section of us who were spirit filled. You know the uh, covert spirit filled group who was trying to get people filled with the spirit and understand the word of God. And, uh, but in our group we had, we had a, a single lady who had a daughter and on the weekends or every other weekend the daughter would have to go with the father. And every time the daughter would come back from being with the father, she was kind of uh, different. And she was, Daddy, where's my daddy? Where's my daddy? Where's my daddy? Just, you know, she's only two or three. And she was just frantically looking for daddy. We're thinking, what's wrong? That's something's wrong. You know, the, the mother, you know, she's a nice woman. It's not like, and so we just saw this happening for, for a while. And we got together one time in the car. We're headed back from somewhere and headed over to this lady's house. We kind of hung out. We went to hang out over there. And we, were, we wanted to pray for her. So somebody said, let's pray for uh, this lady. And so we began to pray. You know, it was three of us, I think. Three or four of us. And we began to pray in the car for her. And all of a sudden, I had a, I had a word. I had, had something that God showed me. And, and I think at the same exact time, He showed someone else in the car. And we looked at each other like this. Right in the middle of the prayer, we're praying in tongues. Right in the middle of praying in tongues, we, we looked over at each other and said, it's her daughter. That's all we knew. All of a sudden, it wasn't just the mother. It was something about the daughter. Uh, and so we said, okay, well, when we get over there, we'll ask her if she wants us to pray for her daughter. Amen. Well, we get over to the house, and we're sitting around, and we, we express to the mother, hey, you know, we were praying for you, and it seems like the Lord wants to, he, he wants us to pray for your daughter. Would you like us to pray for her? 
And so she said, sure, that'd be fine, you know. And uh, so we began to pray for her daughter. And within a few seconds, the daughter just goes crazy. Turns beet red, starts screaming and yelling and shouting. And, and we, I didn't know much then, but I recognized that ain't normal. <laughs> Is that what happens to you when you get prayed for? <laughs> And so we recognize it's the devil, and we cast the devil out of her. And when we cast the devil out, she really went crazy. I mean, just almost a word to scare you, she went so crazy. Turned beet red, stayed beet red for several minutes. In the meantime, the mother was digging in the bag. She had just picked her daughter up from the weekend. She was digging in the bag, and in the bottom of the daughter's bag, she found, you know, where all the diapers or whatever it's are. In the bottom of the bag, she found a book called the, the White Spell Book for Little White Witches. And she pulls this thing out as the devil's coming out. Then the, when the daughter sees the book, she goes just mad, just out of her mind mad. And, you know, I recognize, you know, it's nothing to be worried about. The devil's coming out of this girl and he's mad about it. I understand that. I, I've read enough of the Bible to recognize when the devil's cast out, he does his one final throwdown. You've seen that in the scripture. And so we just hung in there. We got to hang in there. And we just hung in there. And, oh, you're coming out. Shut up and come out. Shut up and come out. That's all you got to really do to the devil. Shut up and come out. And uh, <clears throat> sure enough, Three minutes. I think maybe the whole thing lasted three to five minutes. Sure enough, all of a sudden her color's back. She's normal skin tone. She's happy, smiling, hanging out with mom. And uh, <laughs> one of the fellows, now he didn't know what he didn't know what was happening. He was scared. He wasn't a spirit filled guy. He was in there though, and he he said, "What do you want me to do with the book?" I said, "Well, in the Bible they burnt all that weird stuff, so go out there and burn it." So they burned it on the barbecue pit outside. And daughter was healed. Praise the Lord. Praise Isn't that wonderful? Praise Got to minister to mother. Mother was okay that, you know, <laughs> I recognized something that's happened here. And uh, then I got kicked out of the Baptist church for it. Okay. <laughs> we had a couple other things even more prominent than that that got word up to the head guy. And they called me in and kicked me out. And I said, okay, love you, bye. <clears throat> the point is, you know, there's weird stuff out there. There's weird stuff that affects your life or your friend's life or your neighbor's or maybe someone comes to you. Now, one of the secrets of, of uh, taking authority over the devil is somebody has to come and want help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have to open up for you. You can't just run around finding weird people and casting devils out of them. And not everything's a devil, and so you can't do that to people. Uh, <laughs> so don't fall in the trap of that. You know, every, every time some oddity occurs, you know, you blame the devil and say, you got a devil, and the person says, oh my gosh. Don't do that. You need to know from the Lord. You need to know from the Lord. You know, in the case with the little girl, we knew from the Lord. There was something that the Lord was showing us, so we recognized that. So you can't just can everything and, and do the same thing with everybody, but you can keep your eyes open. Be willing to kick open rocks, find areas that need to be, you know, shored up, cleaned out, and help people. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, talking about the body of the Lord and the blood of the Lord, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. That's where he stripped the dominion from Satan. Satan had free dominion in the earth and could hide himself. But he took that dominion away. Now we can shine light on the devil and whip him. You can't kill him and you can't throw the devil in the abyss and you can't end all suffering for all humanity in a general sense, but you can help few. You can help those that come. You can help individuals. You can solve your family crisis. Amen. Verse 15, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So do you or have you do you recognize that you've been released from the fear of death? Amen. Nobody here needs to fear death. That's right. Neither the death of your body nor the death or temporary death or or partial death or incipient death which would be sickness. You don't have to fear cancer. Amen. 
If you fear any, if you recognize any fear of some dreadful disease that you've seen a commercial for, I know they're not advertising the disease, they're advertising the medicine. But it can sure put some fear in your mind, can't it? Oh my gosh, I wonder if that's me. Oh my gosh, I wonder if I've got some of that. If you recognize that, number one, shut the commercial off. Number two, get on top of it and say, no, 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 no. Pastor said Hebrews 2.14 is real. You follow me? Go to, your, go to your word, go to your Bible, and get some faith in you so that you don't have to live with fear because you don't have to. Amen. That's part of occupying what Jesus has already accomplished for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm closing the book. We could go a hundred different ways, but maybe somebody needs prayer today, needs help today. I don't know. Everybody, please stand to your feet. <clears throat> Lift your hands up to the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Make some decisions in your heart that we're going to walk with the fellowship of the unashamed. Yes. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of laying hands on the sick people. I'm not ashamed of getting filled with the Spirit and speaking with tongues. I'm not ashamed of standing for what I believe. I'm not ashamed of witnessing for Jesus. I'm not ashamed to tell others about Him. I'm not ashamed at all to live a right life before God. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I walk with Jesus. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Come on, are you? Are you? Have you given it all? Have you jumped in? Have you jumped in? Have you jumped in? Have you jumped in? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you jumped in? Or have you been towing it? Come on, make the decision now. Make the decision right now. Make the decision. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Refedese, que te basa, va te gozo, va te gese, para trente, 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 para trente. Don't be afraid of the river. Don't be afraid of the river. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go all in. Don't be afraid to go all in. For I'll catch you. I'll keep you. I'll catch you. I'll keep you. I'll cause you to succeed and win. I'll cause you to ride on the high places of the earth. And in me you'll find delight. In me you'll find delight when you let go of the others. When you let go of the others. When you let go of the others. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that has sickness in your body? Pain, sickness, infirmity, anything wrong? Wave your hand if you got something in your body you want to get rid of right now. You want to get rid of it right now? You want to get rid of it right now? All right. Lay your hand on yourself your head, your heart, wherever. Lay your hand on it right now. Exercise your authority right now. Exercise your authority right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 